My name is Burr Sutter, and I'm the Director of Developer Experience for Red Hat. So basically, I, from a global standpoint, I manage developer evangelism, developer advocacy, we go out and talk to developers at developer conferences around the globe. Uh, and I spend a ton of time just simply capturing what developers want and bringing that back into product management and engineering into the organization itself to help ensure that we're building better technology for developers to engage with and developers to adopt. Serverless is actually great because it's kind of a misnomer. Kind of like microservices is also a misnomer, meaning it doesn't actually describe what it really is. And serverless, for a lot of people, if you're in management at least, in IT management, you're like, oh, serverless, that means I can get rid of all those computers and still run computing technology, right? No computers. And maybe all the people associated with computers, can I, can I get rid of those too? And all you're really doing is simply moving the problem someplace else. So if you think of all the modern APIs that as a developer we can consume, for instance, if we want authentication, we can go to Okada or we can go to Auth0. If we want some form of storage, we can use S3 at the Amazon Cloud. If we're, we can use all these different services through their APIs at various cloud providers and not have to reinvent that wheel. And therefore it is serverless to us, because I don't see a server. I don't have to worry about air conditioning. I don't have to worry about power. I don't have to worry about the uh, one U rack mounted server sitting in that rack. I can ignore all of that. And someone else is taking care of making sure that hardware and all the infrastructure is supported for me. I'm just simply dealing with a public facing API. And so that's how I see serverless really playing out. We can think of it as backend as a service before not too long ago, so be at BAS, right? Some sort of form of database capability as a service, or maybe some form of mobile backend as a service. That was very popular for a long period of time. Or any kind of API consumption now is serverless architecture in my mind. And then there's another aspect of serverless that's a little bit different, that's function as a service. Right, that's where the programmer can actually write small, little, unique functions, upload that into the infrastructure, and have the cloud operator actually execute that on their behalf. Oracle does have some very specific innovative advantages, as well as just, uh, let's call them systematic advantages. So Oracle, of course, has been around the block a lot for uh, when it comes to enterprise application development. It is incredible, the database itself is incredibly well known, well loved within the DBA community when it comes to the Oracle database. And so they really appreciate and understand and have a great relationship relationship with traditional enterprises, the Fortune 2000, the, the, you know, the Global 2000, the big banks, the big insurance companies, the big governments. And so Oracle does have that relationship, and that is certainly a huge win for them versus, let's say, another type of uh, cloud provider who might just be now moving into the enterprise space and really starting to develop those relationships. So that's a big thing. And so leveraging that and treating that carefully and right will be a key, a key element of Oracle strategy going forward, in my mind, as saying that as a non-Oracle person. Um, but at the same time, on the Oracle side, you're, you also have some very innovative ideas as well. Not only are they investing in things you know, like blockchain and chatbots and things of that nature, which are novel and interesting, uh, but they're also investing in things like serverless architecture around the FN project, and the FN project has a great pedigree. The team working on it have worked on this concept of back as a service before, how to run functions that scale in a publicly hosted way, uh, and so they can definitely leverage that concept of moving into a serverless architecture, which the serverless architecture is going to be a wonderful back-end architecture for any of the modern style applications that are high end, so like IoT applications, mobile applications, that next generation of highly interactive web application, you know, based on a web socket versus standard HTTP. There's going to be a lot of interactivity where data is no longer simple request and response, where data is no longer HTTP get, put, post, or delete, but where now data is literally a stream. So when data moves to the speed of streams, and you got to be thinking of that from an IoT standpoint, mobile standpoint, web socket standpoint. Now function as a service, back in as a service, like that really starts to matter more in my, in my opinion.